welcome to another edition of On The Rise. We are so happy to be back once again. We've got a great new artist that we're trying to introduce you to. Her name is Heather Harvin, and we think you're going to really enjoy what we got to say, and you're going to definitely enjoy the music that she's putting out there. So welcome back, and let's go ahead and get started. So how are you doing today, Heather? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Shout out to everybody watching. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So I want to go ahead and kick this off. And I just wanted to ask, you know, give us a little bit about your journey as to, you know, being a singer and what is what inspired you to pursue this career and, you know, in the genre of music that you're doing. Oh, that is a great, great question. So I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Shout out to the East Coast. Ew. <laughs> and just growing up, music was everything to me it still is of course um but I realized that my dreams were too big for Baltimore thus I moved to LA when I was in college to really pursue music and um I think if anything just seeing the impact that music has on others specifically even me in, in my life and it just has the capability to turn a frown into a smile you know what I mean like give you energy or just something where you can just an outlet for relief when you're going through heartbreak it's just it has so much power and impact and I just knew right then and there that I needed to not only do music but also just help people just really connect and just do my part of making the world a better place gotcha that's absolutely excellent that's absolutely excellent so um the music that we heard really good that's how come you know we yep. wanted to definitely you know get up and get with you so um, I know for me personally, you know, I like the voice. I like what you got going on. But in your mind, what sets your music apart from other artists that's doing the same genre out there? And how would you describe your how would you describe your unique style and sound? I would say it's it's me. So literally, I'm I'm a singer songwriter. So I'm sharing my story. So every lyric, you know, every nuance and how I sing it it's not only attached to me, but it's a part of me. Um, and that's the one thing I love connecting with people, being able to just share my story and just see the relatability that it has with, with my fans. It's um, just, you know, a dream come true. Got you. I got you. Now, you know, I'm personally, let's say, I like, um, if I'm going to go some old school, I like myself some Nina Simone. I like okay. myself some um, uh, Aretha Franklin. Let's get in some Gladys Knight, you know, some of the divas that's out there, you know what I'm saying? And let's bring it up into, you know, today. I like, you know, I'm listening to some Sabrina Claudio. I'm listening to some of course. Ai Aiko, you know, this, that, and the other. What uh, artists have you found as you've been going through your career? Do you find inspiration on what you got going on? Oh, uh, two opposite ends of the spectrum. So. My favorite artist of all time is Whitney Houston. I'm just putting it out there. I, uh, the Her voice, just it just does something to me, and it does something to the entire world, I'm sure. So for sure, Whitney Houston. Um, but also, I really love Celine Dion. <laughs> she is everything to me. Um, when I was training, young, when I was younger, I would train to her songs because she has vocally – her songs just have the capability to give you a variety and dynamics, you know what I mean? And just the, how you use your voice from chest to head to mix to belt, you know, high belt, low belt. Just so, um, definitely Celine Dion. I love her. And then I would say recently, I can't even lie. Like, I'm actually really feeling Beyonce. I think this last album, Renaissance, vocally is her best. Yeah. But you know what? I must admit, I also, I do like Sabrina Claudio as well. Um, but I'm also into Snow Allegra, too. She's a vibe. I'll agree. I'll agree. That was yeah. pretty good. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. I really do. Yeah. Y'all are <laughs> dropping some heavy hitters there for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, Heather, you mentioned that you moved from Maryland to L.A. We hear about a lot of artists doing that to really go after their dreams. Did you just kind of one day decide you were going to move or did you plan and kind of what were your, like your biggest struggles uh, to your L.A. relocation? So I'm a planner, naturally. So I, I have to have everything planned out. And so um, I want to say when I was 16, 
I knew, and I mentioned this earlier, I knew that for my dream, I needed to be somewhere else. So technically, the plan was to move to New York, and I did an internship at NYU uh, my summer of junior year. And I'm like, oh, I love New York. And somehow L.A. fell into my lap right out of high school. And so, yeah, I mean, I just kind of took a leap of faith and moved. And um, I would say initially the hardest struggle was the, the West Coast is very different than the East Coast. Very different. So um, the vibe here is a little bit more chill, more relaxed. Like I said, I'm a planner. We hustle on the East Coast. You know what I mean? Like we get things done. And so it was an adjustment for me to just kind of adapt to the culture here in L.A. to, to really kind of network and connect. Um, and then really to just finding the right circles to really network and just kind of rub the right shoulders. So, yeah. That was definitely an adjustment. All right. All right. I'm feeling you. Now, normally we have a third co-host. Her name is Ashley, but she Hi. couldn't make it tonight. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Hey, but she wanted me to give you a message that says she's really, really loves your work. She believes how, oh, how talented you, you are. And she said that you actually uh, remind her of Kelly Rowland's motivation. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's <laughs> one of her she's favorite things. That, she's Ellie. just... She was all about it, so she just wanted me to go ahead and reiterate that to you. And I wanted to make I sure love that. that. Yeah. Thank you, Ashley, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we definitely, like I said, we definitely appreciate, you know, the time that you're spending with us to get to know you. So I also wanted to ask, do you have a a memorable experience or a performance that you've done since you've been in the game that uh, kind of like impacted you as an artist? Like, whoa, this happened. So I decided I wanted to do this or that or this, that, and the other. Yeah, so I was been very fortunate to achieve quite a bit throughout my career. Um, one of the great things that I've been able to do, uh, I actually performed at the Hollywood Bowl with Kristen Chenoweth. Um, for those of you who don't know her, she's an incredible Broadway star, TV star, um, beautiful, beautiful voice. And so um, my background is classical opera and musical theater. So it was really cool to be able to connect with her um, through that avenue. But also what was life changing was her music director actually um, is a singer songwriter. And I remember just expressing to her like, hey, I just graduated college. This is what I want to do. Um, I love songwriting. I want to tell my story. I kind of want to gear off from musical theater and just kind of do more popular music, which is something that Kristen was getting into herself at the time. So just being able to connect with her music director and just receiving a lot of insight, advice, encouragement, faith to keep going, really how to navigate, how to go about it, um, that definitely was life-changing for sure. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So, um, we did, let's see, I'm, I'm going to try to remember, look up, uh, Give Me. That's the song. Oh, yeah. Favorite song, yeah. Give Me, yes. All right, so tell us a little bit about Give Me and what's up with that. We want everybody to hear that. That's that's a good track. Yeah. Uh, that's my favorite song that I've ever written, by the way. And I'm coming out with the remix for Give Me uh, the end of the summer, August 2023. Be on the lookout. Um, that song is very personal. I was in, I was in a dark place. Um, I was really wrestling with my faith. I was wrestling just with even just doubting and second guessing that I make the right move to LA, you know what I mean? Just even struggling within a certain relationship that I was in. And so um, I wrote that as really a plea and a cry for release and relief. Um, just kind of like, hey, you know, SOS, you know, just even to myself, just really forcing me to just really realize that I was in such a dark place and it was time for me to come out of it. Um, like I said, it's my favorite song. I I think we all go through those seasons, those darker seasons. And it was interesting because that was a song that I wrote in the middle of COVID. And I know a lot of people went through depression, um, some dark times during COVID because what do you do when the, the whole world is shut down? I can't even go outside. You know what I mean? Like I'm stuck in the house in these four walls and I'm really big on connection. And so I wrote that because I didn't have connection. I didn't have the same outlets that I had before COVID. And it really messed me up. Really affected me. So, yeah. Got you. I got you. Well, yeah, it definitely affected a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But I'm very happy that you did find a positive way 
to deal with what was going on by, you know, definitely putting it into the music. Plus, you know, we get some good, something nice to listen to out of it. <laughs> <laughs> throw, a, throw a little personal flavor up in there, you know, how it worked out yeah, for all of us. You know what I'm saying? So I, I actually love it. So um, what do you have new coming up? Like um, what's on the horizon for people to know about Heather Harbin as 2023 is coming, you know, rapidly leaving? Absolutely. I know, right? It's literally almost August, pretty much. Um, well, like I said, Give Me Remix is coming out next month, the end of next month. But also, you know, people know me for my Trap Christmas. It's a vibe. So Trap Christmas 2023. Well, maybe not. I think I need to name it something different because I can't keep naming it Trap Christmas. You know. But um, I love the holidays. I love Christmas. I love Trap Christmas. Um, just really, you know, Fusing the hip hop and the traditional together, and the pop and the R and B and the soul, just you know, it's a big, big melting pot. Um, but very excited for this Christmas, 2023 coming out. Um, yeah, and then also too, um, I'm also working on some projects um, with an up and coming rapper named It Official. He's incredible, so stay tuned for that as well. All right. Well, very good. Very good. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So um, if let's say if you had the financial means to do so and you could throw a concert anywhere in any venue and you could have four people on your bill with you, oh. who would that be? Ooh. Okay. Mm. yeah so we're going for the vibe we're going for the concert <laughs> what would be okay. your show that puts you on the map boom we throwing you out there new Coachella I want to say well I've always wanted to do a concert at Madison Square Garden Um, yeah that's just been a dream of mine so to knock that off of my bucket list that would be nice I know my, my mom was like, girl, you should think, you know, bigger, international. But, you know, people will travel to Madison Square Garden. Just saying. Um, definitely Madison Square Garden. Or, ooh, I got to say Beyonce. Can't even lie. Um, I would love Celine Dion. That'd be amazing. Um, ooh. Bruno Mars would be great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is a great question. This is hard. I'm like so many people. Beyonce, Celine, Bruno. Ooh, who else? I listen to so many people. And I actually vibe with a lot of people. I would say, okay, call me crazy. But I'm going with Kanye West. Okay. I That's think a stacked it bill. Into it, I think because it's different audiences, so it's, you know what I mean? It gives me a great, great variety, and, you know, yeah. That is a like really that. stacked bill. You'll be paying crazy guarantees on that one. But that's a I, know. Bill. <laughs> I know. That would be actually a good show, man. Like, oh, yeah. The contrast of all the different styles of music. Yeah. Like you said, B, Yay, Celine, you. Bruno Mars, because I you know I ain't heard Bruno in a hot minute, but you know what? That'd be actually pretty good. I, I'd probably go pay to see that one myself. The garden would sell out with that bill. Yeah, right. So fast. Yeah, right. But that's all good, man. I think that is wonderful. <laughs> I think that is wonderful. I really do. Well, Heather, look, we are very thankful that you took the time out to talk to us. We just wanted to get to know you a little bit more. And we wanted to get our fans and our family out there to get to know you a little bit more because the talent that you are putting out there for everybody, we definitely think that people should hear it, man. You are really good at what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah, most deaf, most deaf. And we definitely going to keep up with you and keep following your career as we keep going because, you know, we got to see what happens. I mean, yep. Beyonce started somewhere, right? Exactly. So started somewhere, right? And so exactly. – Everybody has that shot, and so we're hoping the best, and we know that you're actually going to be Thank successful. You. Just keep doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you both so much. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, you can follow me on social media at Heather Harvin on all platforms. Please check me out, and just thank you for this platform. It's great to be able to come to a safe space to talk.
talk about my music amongst people who truly love music. Yes. Thank you. It's a breath of fresh air. Absolutely. Thank you both. What you guys are doing, please keep going because we need it. So thank you. Oh, no, thank you. And we really appreciate it. Like, and that's a great example of why we do it, man. There are so yep. many great artists mm-hmm. out there just like you. And we look forward to being able to speak with them and hopefully help them get out there because everybody deserves a shot, you know? Yeah. Yeah, everybody sure. does. But thank you so very much for your time. We are so very happy. All right, Rise fam, we done <laughs> did it again. We done brought you somebody great. Check out Heather Harvin and all the social media platforms. Go ahead and listen to her music. You're going to really like it. If you like R&B, soul, if you actually like good music, just go check it out. You're going to enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? So once again, like we like to tell each and every one of you, stay safe. All right? Make sure Mm -hmm. that you keep loving your families and everything because, you know, this Mm -hmm. is biggest most important things in the world is make sure you got family and friends around you know what i'm saying and always you know keep on the rise we'll be talking to you another time we'll be bringing you some more great artists but for this week we want to say thank you to heather and we will catch you guys later all right thank you all right